stem cells carry great hope and expectations for regenerative medicine, but major hurdles still need to be overcome. How do they interact in vivo? What is their therapeutic potential? The team of the Transplant and Stem Cell Immunobiology Lab investigates the immunobiology of embryonic and adult stem cells, the key to future clinical use. Stem cells are hoped to be used in many fields like diabetes or neurological diseases and our hope uh, in the heart center is that we can really use them after myocardial infarction. When the heart becomes necrotic and the heart function is impaired, we would like to use stem cells to recover the heart. Although the patient's own autologous stem cells do not get rejected, they are not readily available when acutely needed. The TSI team therefore aims at generating a universally compatible allogeneic donor stem cell line. And that's what we are working on, to really generate low immunogenic stem cells, which you can use as off-shelf products. Sonja Schrepfer's team tested the immunogenicity and immunomodularity properties of different stem cell lines. Among the candidates, mesenchymal stem cells from the bone marrow and from the umbilical cord lining. Novel molecular imaging makes this in vivo comparison possible. With bioluminescence technology, transplanted stem cells can be visualized and followed in live organisms non-invasively over time. Therefore, the TSI lab generated stem cells overexpressing luciferase, resulting in photon emission after luciferin administration. The bioluminescence imaging is very important for our stem cell studies, since you can label your stem cells and then you can actually follow them in vivo. So those cells we can actually investigate every day in vivo and we can investigate the survival, the migration of those cells. We exactly know when they get rejected. The immune response against both stem cell types was characterized under in vivo and in vitro conditions. The results were very surprising to us. Um, we found out that the umbilical cord lining mesenchymal stem cells showed less immunological capacity and they would survive better, they proliferate better and they secrete better immunomodulatory factors than the mesenchymal stem cells isolated from the bone marrow. Despite favorable immunomodulatory features, umbilical cord lining MSC still underwent rejection. The studies provided further knowledge about the mechanisms involved. The confocal high-speed laser microscope visualizes ongoing rejection in tissue sections. So here the cells stand in green. The transplanted stem cells, identified by green immunofluorescence, are attacked by lymphocytes, shown in red. Multipotent adult stem cells, they are already used in the clinic. However, we think that the future probably will be the use of pluripotent stem cells like embryonic stem cells. You can compare the immune response to the mesenchymal stem cells and to the embryonic stem cells. So what we are now trying is to use this information and to actually generate one stem cell that we modify that it would escape the immune response of the patients. Embryonic stem cells can already be differentiated into cardiomyocytes, which show coordinated contractions in cell culture. If their immunogenicity can be suppressed, the transplantation of these cells could become a reality. So we believe there are still major hurdles to overcome, like the immune reaction after transplantation of those cells. However, these cells are really hoped to be the future in medicine, not only for patients after myocardial infarction, but also for patients with diabetes or neurological disorders. The TSI lab uses the latest technology to shed light on unresolved questions in stem cell immunobiology with the goal of bringing stem cell therapy closer to clinical practice.